Thank you, Nick. I try to recover time, so I will try to be short. Um, so, um, thank you now to all the ESA speakers that are joining us in this uh, discussion table for this panel. This concluding panel will showcase the current and future ambition and involvements along the opportunities that ESA provides in the fields of finance. So, we have listened to the presentation. Now we will see what ESA is doing and what are also the programs and the instruments that ESA could offer. Uh, so we are now welcoming the representative of uh, four different directorates, industrial policy, navigation, and observation, and telecommunication, and integrated applications. So uh, the first uh, speaker is uh, Luca Del Monte, is the head of the industrial policy and uh, SME division at ESA. Um, Luca is the head of industrial policy SMS division. As I said, his division advises ESA member states, governments about the development, development of a globally competitive and sustainable space industry, capable inter alia to foster the European space economy and the growth of a new generation of European space entrepreneurs. Luca holds a, ma a master degree in aerospace engineering uh, from University La Sapienza Rome, is graduate of the French National Defense Procurement College and of the HEC Montreal School of Management and Innovation. Is aut author of more than 30 peer reviewed publications and member of International Astronautical Federation Committee on Space Security. Uh, question Luca. Uh, uh, I know you are with us today to present something new, a new initiative. Thank you for joining. I will leave you the floor. It's not a question, it's an introduction. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Grazie, Giorgio. Good morning, everybody. And um, I understand that we are running a bit late, uh, and uh, I will help you in, uh, in, uh, in some way because uh, I will try to be very short and quick. I know that uh, my colleagues from the other uh, uh, directorates of ESA, as you correctly said, will present, uh, let's say, ways to uh, that ESA offers, let's say, to the framework that ESA offers to develop uh, new activities, new initiatives. Um, I will introduce, I would like to, to introduce to you today, uh, let's say, a quite original type of framework that we have developed a uh, while ago uh, within uh, our uh, our team and uh, i think that we have decided to present to you and introduce you today this tool because we think that it's particularly suitable to engage with the uh, uh, non space type of communities we think that the event of today is a brilliant example of this because it brings together, let's say, users and uh, potential future users of space or communities uh, that are uh, um, certainly not the usual suspect in our group with, with, with uh, in contact with the space capabilities and space-based uh, services. But here we want to do something more. We would like uh, uh, to, to create partnership, not just uh, to, to establish a customer service provider relationship, but real industrial partnership. This framework that we have created a while ago is called the Global Space Economic Workshop, and basically is a, is a tool where we have a gathering of leaders from uh, institutions and, uh, and the industrial sectors, uh, different from space, with those that are our, uh, let's say, space, uh, traditional space partners. And uh, we usually organize uh, uh, full day events where we have uh, uh, some type of keynote speaks, speeches just to, to, to warm up, let's say, and uh, explain the, the different, uh, the different uh, type of problematics. But then we also have, um, let's say, real working tables. We try to do something together already during these meetings, and we try to, to have these, uh, these two different type of customers uh, teaming up today together to start uh, exploring new ways of working together. So uh, this is a way that we think it's very useful to, to foster innovation and, uh, and uh, create this, uh, this cross-sectorial uh, link. You know, we are convinced, totally convinced that uh, innovation is, uh, is fostered by this uh, um, cross-fertilization, let's say, between different sectors. Next slide, please. Um, as I said, 
after these, uh, we started uh, a while ago. Uh, the first one was uh, in Paris, and uh, we we had immediately was was quite a generic type uh, of event in the sense that we really brought together uh, a number of uh, of uh, representatives from at least uh, four or five different types of industrial verticals uh, to meet with uh, with space experts. And there were a lot of new ideas that were created. And uh, so we decided that uh, there was something to, to explore, to do more. And next slide, please. Um, we, we have uh, then replicated that event a number of times since then. So the first one took place in 2017. But then we had uh, other events uh, in uh, UK, in, uh, in France, uh, in, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, and uh, even in Estonia. And each of these, uh, uh, each of these uh, different uh, event was focusing on targeting, let's say, a specific type of industrial verticals. For instance, uh, the one uh, in the uh, UK um, was focusing on uh, metallurgy and, uh, and energy. And in that occasion, uh, we, we entered in contact with uh, a quite a type of uh, an innovative type of startup, a metallurgic uh, UK company, who proposed to to us, let's say, to our uh, space community, to address uh, uh, a problem that they were facing at that time, and we identified with them the the right approach to do so. And the right approach in that case was the launch of uh, of a competition of uh, an inducement prize. And uh, just as a result of that global space economic workshop, we had the first launch uh, uh, of the first ESA grand challenge, that is to address in this case uh, a metallurgic uh, uh, industry type of problematics. We had several other examples. For instance, the one in Italy was uh, uh, I think there were two editions of that, and both, both of them were focusing on the in aviation and <coughs> cyber security. And in this case, also uh, partnership uh, developed during this and networking uh, during this event uh, led to uh, identification of new ideas of cooperation between space and uh, unmanned aerial system and space and cyber security type of industry that eventually were rerouted through and to the appropriate uh, ESA frameworks. You will listen uh, in a few minutes from my other colleagues, uh, let's say which these frameworks are, but then uh, this led uh, eventually in, uh, to the, the funding uh, from ESA, by ESA of uh, new projects. Here you, you have the name, uh, Cruise, uh, Cerveza and others. There were even, um, some uh, cooperation and new project launched uh, in the framework of artificial intelligence with the uh, uh, industry coming from uh, oil and gas sector. So here you, you have in these slides, uh, 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 let's say a, an example of a few of the most known, uh, well-known companies that uh, have participated in this event and uh, decided eventually to team up for uh, a study, a project, a reflection, a full-fledged service, uh, a grand challenge with us. And uh, uh, this was to the benefit of, of both because we, we managed to achieve some advancement on both sides, let's say for the space interest, but also, and in more in particular, even for the interest of uh, the, 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 the specific industry. Next one. Um, so, when it comes today, we think that uh, here there is something that uh, we, we definitely want to explore because I, I listened with a lot of attention to previous speakers and uh, I was fascinated by, by the number of ideas that uh, uh, fintech type of, uh, of industry can leverage uh, using uh, space, uh, space assets. And we think that we can do more today was a, a, an excellent way to introduce this topic and uh, I think really uh, made me thinking of a lot, uh, a lot of opportunities now. But I guess that now it's time for us to reflect about launching and announcing a, a new global space economic workshop, this time focused for this year on space for finance. We think that this event will be capable of providing you a, a concrete opportunity for networking and identifying new, new potential partnerships, maybe even new projects, new ideas. 
the idea that that we have, and then maybe in the next slides we can uh, we can uh, uh, display, let's say the the the, the, the exactly the, the timeline is uh, would be fine. Uh, maybe we can show directly the timeline and say that we are today at this downstream gateway workshop. That is for us a kind of uh, warm up event. Um, but the idea is to announce a call for proposal for partnership and projects open to space industry and the finance community. So what we would like to see is to receive new ideas from between in the period between June and September next year, uh, this year, sorry, um, to uh, new ideas to, 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 to launch a partnership and projects uh, dedicated to the themes that you have been discussing today. What we will do is that we will select uh, what we think are the best proposals and we will invite the proposers of the best ideas to uh, co-design with the partners and the ESA expert in a dedicated session and networking opportunities B2B in a global space economic workshop to be held by before the end of this year, ideally 2021 November, and uh, hopefully, let's say our uh, our hope, of course, is to have it in presence because, let's say, in this case, B2B opportunities are certainly enhanced and uh, and way more efficient. So uh, stay tuned with us because uh, uh, in June 2021 we will announce uh, this uh, call for proposal and partnership. And uh, we want really to hear from you, both space and fintech uh, community, to have new ideas, new proposals. We will invite the best of them to the next uh, Global Space Economic Workshop by the end of this year. Thank you very much, Giorgio. You have the floor again. Thank you, Luke. Um, you've been uh, quite speedy. That's good. Um, so now the next presenter is uh, Amanda Regan. Amanda? Hi, Georgia. Do you uh, see and hear me? Yeah. So Amanda Hi. is... <laughs> Hello, do you hear? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Amanda is the head of the Philab Invest Office and is the program manager of the new investment in industrial innovation in Cubed Earth Observation Co-Funding Program, which focuses on developing commercial Earth Observation products and services based at ISA Esring in Italy, in Frascati. Before moving to Italy, Amanda was seconded by ISA to the European Commission in Belgium where she focused on, align, on aligning Earth Observation activities and Copernicus at national and European levels. For 13 years, she worked at ISA ESTEC in the Netherlands in Earth Observation Future Missions, preparing a wide range of missions such as the Copernicus Sentinels and Swarm. She managed multiple activities focusing on developing optical, synthetic aperture radar, thermal infrared and altimetry capability. For five years, Amanda worked closely with NASA A-train colleagues promoting constellation, multi-point measurements, and international cooperation. She is particularly interested in small satellites, data synergies, and constellation. Um, as a field combines the best in research and dissemination with the latest technology trends. In the field of finance, could you please, Amanda, tell us more about current field involvements? Yes, it would be my my pleasure. Uh, let me just uh, stop this for a second and I'll just uh, stop my video to increase my bandwidth. Um, okay, uh, Giorgio, are you still seeing my presentation? I do. Excellent. Okay, I'll put it on. Okay, so well, good morning, everybody. Um, as Giorgio said, my name is Amanda Regan. I'm going to give you uh, a quick flavor of uh, the kind of things that we're doing uh, at ESA in the Earth Observation Directorate uh, geared towards finance and, and what we see from our perspective. So what is Earth observation from space? Just to, to, to really introduce this topic. So we have Earth observation satellites which, which orbit around the Earth and they provide uh, long-term systematic data which use different kinds of physics measuring the Earth system. And um, 
new space, as we've called it. So, I mean, I've been in uh, working in Earth observation since 2003, and I would say that from around uh, 2012, we've really seen a paradigm shift in Earth observation. We're seeing we're, we're now sitting in, a, in the middle of a perfect storm of different sectors crashing into the Earth observation uh, uh, domain. So we have lots and lots of data now, um, and uh, we have improved technology. So in terms of satellites, the performance per cubic meter uh, in for satellites is just exploding, uh, enabling a, a lot smaller satellites to be launched. We have connected thinking, so where cloud computing, edge computing, uh, distributed uh, systems rather than centralized systems. And this is really attracting new kinds of people into our sector, entrepreneurs, investors, bringing new money, new thinking and new business models as well. And so we're moving from image pro provision to actually value added services. Um, and this is something that we're really seeing a lot, particularly in the work that I do um, with the program that I'm running. So information that uh, uh, can be derived from Earth observation are things like emissions, uh, waste, effluence, um, uh, how the, the land actually moves, biodiversity, how a city is actually expanding and, and how people are actually moving as well. Earth observation can detect changes, so before and after pictures and support forecasting. We're using now uh, cutting edge technology, which is crashing into the Earth observation sector, things like art artificial intelligence, both in the satellite and on ground, uh, distributed architectures like the blockchain and edge computing. And we're, ta we're taking the data that's coming from the satellite and turning it into information, knowledge, and perhaps even a little bit of wisdom for intelligent decision making. And we're also starting to work uh, a little bit on uh, digital twin earth and uh, working with the commission in, in that direction. And it's really, as it was touched on in the previous uh, session, it's also the scale. So we're, the satellites, uh, they don't care where they are. Um, they're just taking images. So we have global scales, we have uh, uh, country scales, even down to field and uh, individual uh, object scales. So it's uh, uh, really, it, uh, it provides so much information. And what we're seeing is a growing interest between green and sustainable finance um, uh, in relation to this particular webinar. And I think that Earth observation can really help by providing independent, uh, because the satellite uh, uh, just takes the measurements. Uh, the, there is no agenda there. Um, and we also provide reproductible or reproducible uh, analytics. So things like compliance monitoring or, or assessments of KPIs, for example. And something that uh, Luca said in the previous uh, presentation, we are always in Earth Observation looking for partnerships and collaborations to support not just the research and development that we do, but also uh, particularly in the programme that I'm running, uh, we're developing commercial and close to market uh, Earth Observation products and services. So, uh, in terms of Earth Observation and the financial market, we see finance as a real emerging sector. And in fact, Euroconsult have forecast that uh, um, the market will be worth nearly $900 uh, million by the end of the decade. And uh, I think this is something that we have to pay attention to. Um, there are obviously, um, and I know that I'm uh, uh, preaching to the, the choir here, the, the financial sector is not homogeneous. There's lots of different players and with different objectives, ranging from commodity traders to insurance companies to banks. And um, we've tried to uh, um, at least uh, identify some of the main drivers where Earth observation can really help. So we've identified, for example, risk management as something that we can really uh, help with, as well as compliance monitoring and, and supporting the development of strategies. One project that I would like to highlight is uh, the race dashboard. This was looking uh, using Earth observation data to derive economic uh, indicators, looking at COVID-19 impacts. And uh, this was done with the European Commission. 
and it featured a range of economic uh, indicators from Earth observation satellites looking at different aspects of the economy and social economic systems. And you can see some examples of both optical data and uh, data from radar satellites here. Another example is eDrift. This is focused particularly on risk transfer for insurance. And you can see some of the, the major players that have been involved in this particular activity. And they're using different kinds of Earth observation data in different ways. Um, moving to the program which I'm uh, looking after, so I sit in the Fee Lab, which is at Issa Esrin in, in, in Italy, and I'm looking after the invest, uh, Investing in Industrial Innovation program, which really tries to stimulate and develop the commercial, uh, uh, commercial Earth observation data products and services. And I wanted to highlight a few uh, examples of some of the close to market uh, um, and commercially viable uh, products and services that we have in our pipeline at the moment. So, for example, uh, top left, we have um, Skytech. This is an Irish company that have developed a platform to monitor uh, cargo, uh, port, uh, cargo port movements and cargo tracking. And they are also uh, uh, they also have uh, Aon on board as well as uh, as an end customer uh, being part of the activity. Uh, top right, we have Sat for Flood. This is a Dutch activity that is looking at uh, um, combining radar and optical data uh, to really measure the risk of dam and levee uh, collapse. And uh, this is a, a visual platform. Um, bottom left, uh, uh, Flood Sense. This is from a Luxembourg company called RSS Hydro, and they're developing an app which is based on machine learning for flood detection for uh, uh, particular real time uh, um, insights. And uh, insurance is one of the targeted sectors. And then finally, uh, bottom right, this is a Danish uh, consortium led by uh, GeoPartner, and they're looking at using radar data to um, measure how uh, the surface of the, uh, the Earth moves. And they're focused particularly uh, in Denmark, and they want to roll it out uh, uh, to other countries. But if you can imagine that you use uh, Earth observation data to measure how the surface of the Earth actually moves, this is really useful for infrastructure monitoring and for utility uh, utilities companies, also railway companies, to be able to uh, schedule their maintenance planning and uh, uh, and to be able to uh, um, uh, understand what's going on with their infrastructure. Another couple of examples we have uh, top left is Coastio. This is a Irish company that is using. Uh, they're developing these little yellow mini boys to measure um, uh, water quality and uh, they're using it in toge together with uh, earth observation satellite data to to measure water quality and also coastal monitoring and they're particularly uh, uh, one of their customer segments uh, again is the insurance sector um, mantis top right this is an actual uh, satellite that is being developed and I included this because this is the direction that Earth observation is actually going that this satellite is being uh, built specifically to serve an industrial uh, vertical which is uh, oil and gas and energy so what we're seeing instead of satellites being uh, uh, being developed uh, that can serve many different sectors We've now reached an economies of scale and an access to space where uh, satellites can actually be launched that will serve a particular company or a particular sector. And then bottom left, uh, we have an Austrian development called EO Widget. And uh, uh, this is an interesting um, uh, activity which is, has just been kicked off. Um, that's really using, um, oh, it's integrating Earth observation data together with cloud-based uh, uh, ICT widgets um, in terms of compliance for, uh, for CAP and Green Deal agenda uh, aspects. So, for example, uh, direct uh, client payments uh, by, by paying agencies, etc. And then finally, uh, EO Plugin, this is an Austrian-Dutch activity. And they're, uh, they've developed a data platform to support the agro food industry, and they're focusing on using Earth observation data to maximize potato yield. 
and they've actually spun out a little uh, startup which is based in the Netherlands uh, for this as well. So there's a really a real growing ecosystem of uh, commercially focused startups and scale ups based on Earth observation data because this this data is long term and systematic and it's it, it's there to be used. I also wanted to touch on the new regulations for sustainable uh, finance, because I think these really represent opportunities for earth observation applications uh, in terms of new legal frameworks. Um, and also the, the fact that we have this new uh, taxonomy, uh, taxonomy for uh, regulation, uh, which uh, specifies six environmental objectives. And this is something that EO data can actually help with, as well as the uh, the technical screening criteria as well. I think there's really opportunities for Earth observation supported solutions in this particular area. And I would also say that, I mean, what we're seeing is uh, that there is a major digital innovation in the financial sector and there is digital transformation which is really changing the the way that the financial uh, sector is operating and connected with that i mean the the greek uh, the green fintech um, uh, is now connecting to sustainable finance as well at least this is what we're seeing so we're looking at um, emerging uh, innovative concepts and we're, we're seeing that actually fintech and sustainable uh, finance are, are intersecting and crashing into each other. And this is what we're seeing in general in the Earth observation domain that that previously separated worlds are now crashing together into into one. And this is a, a real uh, opportunity to leverage this. Um, and so what we're seeing is new ways of uh, doing things. So things like tokenization and uh, different kinds of commodity uh, trading, as well as looking at um, distributed ledger technology, so, so blockchain and distributed systems, etc. And uh, there's, a, there's a lot of different uh, ways that is uh, forcing, uh, uh, forcing different industries to do things in different ways, which I think is a real opportunity. And this is my final slide. Um, I liked the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the title of this one, FinTech Meets Nature. So um, Regan Network is a, is a startup and uh, their vision is to create a platform where landowners can actually monetize their, uh, their services to, to buyers all around the world. And there's different examples from a fruit orchards to a fishery to a cattle ranch. And at the end of the day, I think that Earth observation is exactly that. We are looking at the Earth. The Earth is a system and everything is connected. And so, you know, I think the, the, the time and the technology is now here to actually move from individual uh, elements that we actually have to start uh, integrating and uh, looking at a bigger picture. OK, Georgia, that was my last slide. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amanda. So, in the interest of mind, I switch immediately to the next, uh, invite the next speaker, Olivier Meyers, who is working in the Navigation Directorate, actually is uh, working on PMT, which is Positioning Navigation and Timing in the NAVISP program. And NAVISP is a program dealing with competitiveness of, uh, of industry in the Positioning Navigation Timing sector. Uh, is in charge, is working on an ABIS element two at his, his program. He's of Belgium and Spanish nationality, obtained his telecommunication system engineer master degree in the Polytechnic University of Valencia, UPV in Spain. He has worked in industry coordinating design and engineering activities for innovative product development in the consumer electromedicine and telecommunication markets. He led a design group in aerospace sector covering avionics instrumentation, radio navigation, and SACCOMS receivers and models. At the University of Valencia Polytechnic and the Polytechnic University of Valencia, he was lecturer on signal processing, sensors, instrumentation, microelectronics, and project management. After eight, eight years in industries, industry, he joined ISA to work first on telecom space and ground systems, including telecom, la, telecom lab coordination and management. He moved 
then in the domain of navigation where he recently joined the Navis core team, as my colleague. His solid technical competence has been acquired managing a wide range of technical activities, such as user and system validation activities, mass market GNSS receiver, test campaign, reorbit effect in user receiver, assisted receivers and mobile phones, initial Galileo FOC deployment validation, Galileo transition batch. He loves to play, swing and spend time with his two children. <laughs> He likes to spend uh, free at home in domotics, RC modeling and robotics. So, Olivier, what position in navigation and timing, or more uh, maybe known as a GNSS in the space sector, uh, so what GNSS, GPS Galileo can do for finance? I will try to answer this <laughs> somehow. Uh, thank you, Giorgio, for the nice presentation. Good. Uh, I, I will start, uh, yeah, well, first uh, saying good morning or good afternoon to everybody, <laughs> uh, depending uh, on, on the time on your side. And time is important. We will, we will see why later uh, through the presentation. Uh, I focus a bit this presentation on technical aspects uh, without losing the, the point to the, the support uh, that we, are provide, we can provide uh, from ISA to, to industry on this, on this uh, area. Uh, in, the, in general on PNT users, in particular on, uh, on finance, that is the scope of this, of this uh, workshop. So, uh, first, uh, uh, as a simple uh, agenda, uh, I, would, uh, I would summarize the, the objectives, uh, and then we will go through a bit incremental way through these different aspects, uh, what can space can do, what, uh, what uh, are the needs of finance that can be fulfilled from space? Uh, we'll focus on uh, global navigation satellite system, GNSS. And then, uh, of course, uh, we, we, will, we will also see what ISA can do uh, in this respect, uh, let's say, for finance. So, ah, I think I'm not really sharing this. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm not really projecting. Okay, so we we focus on uh, on the first aspect. So, what the space uh, space can do? Uh, I call it as well something like a vision from above because satellites are uh, on top above. So, imagine if you were above, uh, what uh, what would you see, and how uh, would you be able to to see Earth? So, target is Earth from above. So, signals can. Uh, can be transmitted and can reach uh, virtually at the same time and can reach uh, virtually every place. Of course, this has a matiz, so uh, nuances, so uh, the, depending on applications. But in general, the, the general idea is uh, that the position is a privileged one from space. And then, of course, from space, uh, unique technologies uh, are deployed uh, and, uh, and uh, capabilities so very 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 quickly because uh, I don't want to enter in, in the other domains from my colleagues but uh, we can have uh, from telecom uh, voice data communication at global scale regional for one for many we can have uh, monitoring and surveying of large large areas of earth that can uh, have an impact on economical activities I think Amanda did a fantastic uh, and gave a fantastic view on that then uh, we have location, which is more our scope, uh, location and precise position in information, which means position, velocity and time for, for assets and people can be provided uh, from space. Um, so space uh, can provide uh, uh, high quality regional and global services that uh, can enable innovative uh, uh, and new applications uh, in many in many areas. We will see some of them in, in the areas of finance and green finance here. So let's focus on uh, global navigation satellite systems, GNSS, what can offer position, navigation and time. So where I am, how I go there, what time is it? So imagine how, uh, many needs uh, that uh, can lead to, to, uh, to a lot of commercial opportunities uh, around that. So let's go back to finance. Uh, time, as I said before, time is important. So let's see, uh, let's see why we need time uh, to understand time, to measure time. So as a very, again, quick introduction, uh, we, we live in a world that everything is relative. Everything is, is changing, evolving. 
and uh, we need some references, absolute references to to relate to rela uh, this this uh, what what we experience to that in a way to position ourselves to understand the world. So we know that uh, things change. We have uh, events, and all this is relative to time. So time is for us uh, at this at this moment an absolute reference, of course, not entering on relativistic uh, physics. <laughs> uh, so how how can we use uh, time? Uh, so how can we measure? I mean, uh, to, to understand uh, to, con to to understand where we are with uh, uh, with regard to the pass of time. So with the pass of time, we have developed different ways to measure the pass of time. This is the key aspect here. So. We have defined uh, precise and accurate time references, uh, and from there, we can measure time intervals. And this is important because we can identify things that happen within these specific time intervals, and uh, we can uh, identify events that are happening happening at this moment, before or after, or even simultaneously. So, uh, how we perceive the time because things change around us, uh, right? So, when we have something that repeats, that gives us a, a, an impression of of, uh, of the pass of time. So, uh, we need things that uh, that oscillate, that repeats. So, in history, we have a pen, the pendulum of a clock. We have vibrations late, uh, later uh, of the quartz uh, that are that when it's driven. A, a quartz uh, plate when it's driven by an electrical field, and uh, they are stable, and uh, we can have clocks uh, made of that. But we want more, and then uh, we investigated, or scientific scientists investigate, and then discover uh, reson uh, some uh, resonance uh, property properties of some atoms, uh, especially hydrogen and uh, cesium, that are used in, in what uh, we call uh, atomic clocks. That can provide a very accurate uh, and, uh, and um, precise uh, time. However, this is not even uh, uh, for a specific uh, usage enough. So we need to relate all these clocks, and then uh, among them, uh, sync get synchronized these clocks, and then we define some uh, time frames or, or time scales in a more appropriate way to to measure the time. So we have a. a as I was saying before, uh, driven by, by the natural uh, uh, events, so by uh, close to our experience, is the universal time, which is based on the rotation of Earth. However, uh, this is not so accurate uh, and, and so precise because uh, Earth does not maintain an exact, exact uh, rotation period. For our normal life, it is, of course, but uh, for a specific uh, and critical uh, applications like GNSS, is, this is absolutely not enough. And for you to understand quickly, I, I just also put these two images in a way that uh, we consider the universal time as something which is not uh, accurate and, and uh, not even precise, let's say. So we, won't, we, we go further, we have the capability of uh, atomic clocks. So uh, an international uh, time frame uh, or scale which is called International Atomic Time, uh, although the acronym is TAI from, uh, from French. <laughs> uh, uh, this is very, it's based on atomic clocks, it's extremely accurate uh, and precise, but it's so accurate and precise that it's not practical. So for, for normal life, let's say. So uh, UT and TAI are not fully aligned. And then we will see this uh, on the second image, which is a, very con, um, synthetic view. Uh, and then what we do? So we want uh, an accurate uh, and precise uh, time scale, but uh, we need that is practical. So we create a coordinated universal time, uh, which is actually uh, uh, behind uh, about for uh, 30 sevens of Thai. So let me just uh, spend a bit of time on this, uh, but, but anyway, quickly. So we see this, this uh, on the horizontal axis, we have the, 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 the pass of time, the real pass of time, let's say. And in the vertical axis, we have uh, the, the moments we measure it. So if we see uh, Tai, Tai is absolutely linear. So we measure here, we measure here, and we obtain exactly the same, uh, uh, let's say, accuracy because it's linear and precision. But we see UT, UT is drifting. 
UT is drifting and it's, it's also noisy because you see these, uh, these um, spikes, let's say. Uh, and then uh, this is caused by the, the air flotation. So, uh, as I said, uh, UT is here and TAI is here. Uh, what we do? So, practically, we introduce, we, we create a, 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 this time scale uh, uh, UTC, which is as precise and accurate as uh, TAI, relies on TAI. However, when uh, UT drifts uh, close to one second, we introduce uh, an offset of one second in UTC. So, uh, for the period of time that we want uh, to have a precise and uh, accurate time, uh, it is uh, precise and accurate, but uh, is aligned with our more natural uh, uh, knowledge of the world, understanding of the world. So, we can say that when we have this uh, leap second introduced, we are here, but then we move from our normal life, uh, let's say, uh, we offset uh, the target and we go back to, to this. So once introduce uh, this this uh, baseline about time, then let's see what all this has to do with finance. So we know well, from my perspective that uh, you are much more uh, expert. Uh, there are much more experts around about finance, but I can say in a very very rough way that finance deals with the management of funds of, of money. Uh, actually, the, the 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 amount of money is relative uh, as well. So everything is relative somehow. Anyway, um, what uh, what happens when we manage something that uh, we have actions? Uh, management is uh, aligned is 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 relate, relative to time as well, or relate uh, to time. So financial elements and transactions are relative to time. So financial markets openings, closures, transactions, accounting, uh, revenue and profit calculation, depreciation, amortization. All are done, uh, assess or analyze uh, with regards uh, along a timeline uh, with a more or less strict, uh, strict course or precise uh, um, needs, let's say. But in conclusion, uh, we know that for finance, time synchronization is important, is capital. And uh, we also know that uh, transactions have to be traceable uh, with regard uh, when they happen. And there are, uh, uh, well, legally traceable, I want to say, and there are some regulations uh, around that. So we need a very uh, a good, so precise and accurate uh, time framework for finance. So now we go to what uh, the GNSS can do for finance, so global navigation satellite systems. <coughs> Sorry. So going a, a bit quick, uh, we know, uh, we can understand that GNSS can provide uh, what finance needs, so time and synchronization, but why and how? This is uh, in the pure essence of the system because uh, the determination of the position made by GNSS uh, receivers rely on a precise time synchronization of, of the actual system. So, um, the system is built in with a very accurate time framework uh, or time scale, which is based in atomic clocks as well. Uh, the, the, the most direct example is the Galileo system time. And of course, it's aligned to TAI as well. Uh, we saw that uh, we can make somehow equivalent uh, then Galileo system time to TAI. And we saw before that we can make it practical relating uh, or, or using using UTC with this uh, specific uh, leap seconds and uh, specific uh, conversion. So from this moment, uh, we have a time as a service provided uh, by GNSS uh, for whatever uh, application that we need uh, in ground, uh, specifically now focus on finance, but this applies to, to any application that, uh, that is uh, required. So I had also this uh, this view just to very quickly make a bit more clear why uh, time is so so, so important for GNSS because uh, every satellite transmit uh, at the same time because if they are all synchronized also they have uh, atomic clocks uh, uh, built in and uh, from the, the ground segment the, uh, all the system is synchronized. So measuring a mark that uh, is transmitted uh, at the same time for the satellites by the receiver, uh, we can estimate the, the distance of the satellites. Then mathematics makes the, the, 
the work uh, and we have some equations and we can derive from that the position and the time uh, of the system. So trying to go fast again, uh, let's focus on what ISA can do for finance. Uh, of course, ISA can do many things. We, we have examples uh, already. We saw already examples. Uh, now I, I tackle uh, already one, which is uh, actually Galileo, that was driven, the development uh, and design was driven, uh, let's say, or led, led uh, by ISA uh, and then done together with industry. But uh, focusing on, on the scope of today, on my area uh, where I'm working in, in ISA, I would talk a bit uh, as well uh, the, the NAVIS program. So the NAVIS program, as, as we say, let's say uh, at home, <laughs> is the Navigation, Innovation and Support Program. And uh, it's, a, it's an ISA program designed to foster innovation and comp competitiveness of the European PNT sector. And in other words, we try to help uh, companies and industry that has uh, that they have ideas and, and they they want some support from from ISA on both aspects, of course, financial and also uh, on, on on technical in, in in aspects that they may they may be doubtful. So we can also guide a bit. Of course, the work is done by them. Uh, I'm talking uh, in element two. We'll see later the structure of the program, but uh, quickly uh, is based on let's say we have technologies, new technologies. Uh, uh, from space, but not only from space, we can have uh, also like uh, Wi-Fi, uh, ultra wideband uh, to, to do positioning, everything, uh, all technologies around PNT sector. And then we have applications, so companies uh, can, uh, can take advantage of, uh, of uh, these technologies and, uh, and uh, develop applications and we can help there. But this is also this uh, fertilize uh, as well, or back fertilize the fact that uh, new uh, technologies are identified, so this is uh, we are already turning around that uh, all the time. Let's say technology applications. A, a quick view uh, uh, of the market you see from this is this come from uh, the uh, <coughs> GSA report, market report. Uh, you see that it's a big uh, a big market uh, now. Uh, mostly nowadays. Uh, driven by consumer solutions and roads so mobile phones and um, and road applications like TomTom Tom and others uh, and then there is but there is a sector that is growing and is growing very fast uh, because this will this this uh, all these sectors are taking advantage of uh, PNT uh, not only time uh, also positioning uh, and then you see that uh, more um, uh, it's a big, a big uh, area that is growing uh, as well, and uh, affecting uh, a lot of sectors on, 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 the, on the society. Let's say from uh, precision agriculture to drones to maritime to rail uh, to emergency response to geomatics. So uh, this is uh, this is really something that uh, uh, is important, and we try to help there. Quickly, the structure of the program. Is based on element one. Giorgio is the expert there. Uh, so ISA says uh, to what uh, we, we want to do, uh, or ISA wants to do, but then uh, I'm focusing uh, in this presentation mostly on element two, which is to help industry in the way I mentioned before. We co fund uh, this because uh, industry has to put uh, their five cents as well and the risk, uh, and then uh, through this, uh, this element, they develop their, their applications. And element three is oriented to a strategic interest of the member states uh, uh, of ISA. Then quickly, I'm approaching the end. Uh, I want uh, to go through some examples of NAVIS Element 2 uh, applications to, to also illustrate about some technologies that we are talking about. So, uh, well, Bene, sorry? Ah, sorry, I, 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 I thought so. <laughs> you were saying something to me. Okay, very quick. So the benefit of uh, the space that we set uh, everywhere, um, signals reaches the, the, also the best spots. So we put antennas in the best spots. We get the time from there, as we explained before, and then we transfer this time. Uh, in this project tower, uh, that is uh, from a Spanish company, uh, they were trying to provide the time uh, references to the Madrid uh, Stock Exchange uh, market. 
and they did, uh, and they employ this. They obtain the time uh, from Genesis and they transfer using technologies as precise time and protocol and uh, White Rabbit, uh, you remember Alice in Wonderland. Uh, so this uh, technologies allow synchronization really at the level uh, with White Rabbit at, at the sub nanosecond, imagine what I'm saying, uh, in the transfer of the time. Oops, I went back. So uh, another important aspect is how Thai, for example, is, is, is maintained, is synchronized in clocks uh, all around uh, the, the different um, uh, labs, let's say, uh, or sites. So uh, a, a, a very um, efficient way to, to do this time transfer is using two-way satellite uh, time transfer with special modems. Uh, and in this project, they develop, uh, they are developing a, a, or they develop a, a modem uh, serving this purpose. So imagine that you try both at the, at the very be same moment based on, on the time scale that is in principle share, uh, the signals are transmitted and then uh, they, they go back. So they follow the same path, they have the same environment. So the, uh, and quickly, the difference arrival uh, reflects the difference in time uh, of the bo of both both uh, sides that want to get synchronized then uh, the other Please. line is how how we make I, I, I interrupt you but we are really running very very late and we have yeah that, uh, I, I will go fast because the, the, the last two slides okay. <laughs> thank you sorry uh, so this this slide is just showing that also we, we need to make uh, robust uh, the the system. So we have uh, uh, different activities that focus on the environments of uh, that can be uh, experienced by when signals are transferred. We talk about uh, backups of satellite uh, of uh, of GNSS when GNSS is not there, following a specific uh, um, the standards. And we go to the future uh, regarding signal authentication, regarding uh, quantum uh, technology. And uh, the last, this is the last slide. Uh, uh, I want also to give this vision of uh, the support to green finance and uh, understood as enable for, for green activities. So this project energy supporting uh, grid synchronization with supports as well uh, green energies. We have an example here of green mobility with maps uh, that, uh, that are uh, reflecting the coverage of the satellite signals. And uh, also green mobility and focus to industry point zero is how a, a fleet of drones can be synchronized uh, using PNT provided by GNSS and other positioning means. This is the last one. <laughs> so thank you very much. Sorry if I extended uh, too much. I was trying to show the, the technologies and how these are reflected and how NAV is, uh, is helping. Okay, thank you, Olivier. Uh, so we are presenting timing. In the recent interest of time, I try to to be very fast in introducing Gonzalo Gonzalo Martin de Mercado. He's working in the TIA directorate. TIA stands for Telecommunication Integrated Applications. So I think here is more dealing with the integrated application part. Um, it, um, Gonzalo currently works at ESA Space Solution exploring new procurement approaches uh, as well as innovative finance for SMEs and startups. Gonzalo leads the uh, first fintech specific call within ESA and was part of the team that relaunched the ESA Investor Forum in collaboration with entities like the Lon London Stock Exchange, Borsa Italiana and Euronex Paris. Gonzalo is a frequent speaker at innovation programs arranged by this and other organizations. As a curiosity and through a collaboration with the European Investment Bank, Gonzalo spent four years working at e-health initiatives for Africa, where he worked closely with regional financial players to develop cross-financing models. So, Gonzalo, is space at the foundation of the financial industry? In which way? And uh, in the interest of time, is synthetic, crispy, to the point. Thank you a lot. Thank you very much, uh, Giorgio, for this kind presentation. And uh, I understand that I'm the last speaker, and that's a big responsibility. So I'm going to yeah, try for lunch time. Yeah. to be <laughs> precise, short, and to the point. So, yeah, I'm going to be the last speaker. I'm going to give you a little bit of a different angle on the activities that ESA does uh, basically to support finance. And uh, when the organizers approached me, they said to me, talk a little bit about innovation and how you contribute to innovation. 
And uh, before starting, I'm going just to make uh, a little bit of an insight here. Uh, in my experience, when I have gone to talk to a lot of companies and lots of programs where I go, and lots of companies that I meet, nobody uses the same definition for innovation. A lot of people believe that developing a new technology is innovation. A lot of people believe that uh, fostering knowledge is innovation. And all of those definitions are right. But for the purposes of my presentation, what I'm going to do is to use the definition that we use in ESA Space Solutions. So something is innovative if you can sell it. If you don't sell it, it's research and development. So just uh, let's put this in very, very clear. So let's go a little bit into the things. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time here just to say that uh, space and finance have actually working close together since long time. There is a lot of discussions today and you have seen lots of spaces, a uh, lot of examples in the past from my colleagues, from Amanda, from Olivier on how to do stuff with data. And data is today are something which is very hyped. There have been also lots of uh, contributions regarding communications, uh, particularly on back, backing up communications, real-time communications. But the king of space technologies in finance is, has been, and probably will be for um, quite some time, basically timing, precision navigation, positioning, timing, GNSS technologies. Okay, uh, but uh, all these are technologies Using the definition that I used, they were innovative in the time, but now basically they are not innovative. They are already acquired, they are products and are commodities that the finance sector is actually using. So then we get a little bit into the realms of, uh, of innovation. So what happens with innovation? Well, again, using the definition that I use, uh, the disappointment is that the finance does not look for research and development. They look for innovation. And due to a number of many of these things is uh, may, many uh, of the nature of the financial sector. It's a very big sector, it's very highly regulated. Uh, there are lots of structures that have to be moved every time that an innovation comes here. They feel more comfortable procuring innovation rather than developing it themselves. An innovation comes basically as an answer to three streams. First of all, because the uh, finance sector identifies some sort of untapped market. Here is a curiosity just to, to say that, for example, one third of the world's population doesn't have a bank account. Um, banking sector is actually thinking very hard how they can actually go into there. Business needs uh, is also another area. So every, peop uh, every day we hear news about how to digitalize the banking office, how we can actually provide services closer to the, the, to the citizen, or basically about future threats in which basically they say, mm, there is this interesting thing that is coming. I'm not so sure exactly how it can be, or it can be a threat for my core business. So I need to do something in order to buy it, procure it, or partner with that uh, with that, uh, that activity. So all that gets into the innovation procurement process of the finance industry and sparks or not a transformation, uh, a certain transformation, and this will start a new cycle. So just uh, in the, uh, basically just to show to you a little bit, three startups that are in our portfolio because we handle basically the application programs of ESA Space Solutions and the Business Incubation Center following these three paths that I have done. So one company that we have, uh, Cloud Asset, an independent company that is basically working on digital payment solutions. This company has used uh, Internet of Things and navigation systems in order to provide payment solutions in Southeast Asia, in the countries where most of the players, including Visa and MasterCard, were not interested in getting there because it was very costly for them to get into this market, into these markets. So this company actually went there, has been able to deploy quite a number of payment solutions and now is partnering with the big credit card companies to use their solutions in order to have access to all these, uh, to, to all these markets. Another company, Mosaic Smart Data, uh, that developed, it was part of the call that Giorgio mentioned before. Uh, this company, what they are doing is analysis of financial transactions. And uh, what they use is one algorithm that uh, is called Octomast, that uh, is used basically for uh, tracking uh, radiation in satellites in order to detect uh, fraud and anomaly in financial transactions. We can get very much into the details, but in the interest of time, I'm not going to do that. 
This company actually, uh, it was a company that was accelerated by JP Morgan Accelerator. It's the second stream that we were showing in my previous slide. And they came to us because they discovered that this algorithm was in the portfolio of ISA, and they would like to try to see if they could basic, if they could make a new product based on it. They was actually positive, and currently they are commercializing their solution, including the ISA algorithms for a number of big banks, including JP Morgan, Deutsche Bank, and Bank of America. And the final company that we have here is uh, QuantCube Technology, which was founded by an uh, ex-Societe General, uh, another startup that is focusing on macroeconomic trends and analysis using Earth observation data. So this company, uh, well, you know that the organizations like the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, they produce reports uh, on the state of the economy and uh, well, certain signals. And this report is actually done yearly or basically in every six months and requires quite a lot of time to combine this information. So QuantCube Technology, what it's doing is to compile a lot of this information and provide it instead of uh, in one year, in a matter of days. So this comes to the attention of Moody's, one of the, the trading and rating agencies uh, of the US, and they decide to make an investment in the company in order to take advantage of this technology that they perceive that could be a threat for them in the future. Uh, but uh, funding through our ISA Business Incubation Center or our application programs is not the only thing that we do. Uh, we have a tool which we call the ISA Investor Forum in which we showcase a number of companies and we present them to investors and potential customers to say, hey, these companies have these products ready. This is basically, uh, are you interested in many of them? And I have, and I'm very proud to say that FinTech has actually been one of the most successful chapters in our ISA Investor Forum. Some of the partners that are included here on the right side of my slide have purchased or invested in some of the companies that are on the left side of my, of my screen. And we are very proud to continue doing that. We have a portfolio of approximately 40 startups and SMEs working on finance, and we hope that that will continue growing. And we hope that we will continue establishing these sort of partnerships with all these players to help the, uh, our companies to go to market and sell their products and services and help the transformation of the finance, of the finance sector. And my final slide. So yes, I have been brief. So the, uh, the organizers of the workshop told to me, okay, can you talk a little bit about space resources and how this could actually be with innovation? And yeah, on the interest of time, I'm just going to be very brief, but you are aware that the space resources is something that uh, is called to be a revolution on the way commodity trading is done in the future for quite a number of things that we are not going to enter into that. But the space resources is something which is in early stages and the question is how can one go into, uh, into innovation in this space? And of course, first of all, we have to do a lot of R&D and projects and technology developments and showcases and, uh, lot, uh, and pilots in order to do simple things like, for example, try to bring asteroids close to the orbit or building cosmic uh, networks in which uh, all these uh, probes and mining things could actually go and send the data to Earth. But also, if we have started to think a little bit about uh, colonies in the Moon and Mars, uh, yeah, there will also be the need to buy and pay for, for certain resources. So that will also require to get some new spacey fintech technology for all these people to be able to buy food, coffee, or whatever they would like to do. And in the end, all this will actually lead into the transformation of uh, the whole finance sector on how to integrate something that is that promises to be very big and that currently there is absolutely no infrastructure to support it. We will work on it. We will be happy to discuss with you about this or any of the other subjects that we have talked. And as I promised, I was very brief. Thank you very much for your participation. My details are on the slide and looking forward to talk to you either through our companies, our investor forum, or any of our programs where we support innovation. Thank you very much. Thank you a lot, um, Gonzalo. We've been quite effect effective, and I think we can close the session here and pass the word to Donatella. Thank you a lot. Thank you very much, Giorgio. Thank you very much to all the speakers. And we, we come to the end of uh, today's uh, workshop. It was an intense day. I would again uh, 
I'd like to thank all the speakers, the participants for the interesting question, the moderators, and of course, the back office who made it all available because there are some hidden figures that organized everything uh, uh, and uh, made it, uh, uh, help us to make it. Um, we had uh, um, several questions in the chat uh, on the availability of the presentation. The session has been recorded. The presentation uh, and uh, the recording uh, will be available on the Downstream Gateway website where you are attending from, actually. And uh, for those who have been uh, registering to, to this event, uh, an email will be sent uh, to, to, to drive you to the right uh, placeholder. Uh, thank you again, and I wish you all a very nice day.